All right, in this video, we're going to be going through an assessment of the shoulder, starting with the active range of motion testing. So can you please show us flexion with your right hand, goes all the way up your hand, beautiful, and then down. And if you can, turn towards those, yeah, perfect. And then please show us extension. Excellent. And then now we're going to go through internal and external rotation, or medial and lateral rotation, depends on the choice. And I would like you to bring your hand all the way to 90 degrees abduction, please. Bend your elbow and point your hand all the way to medial rotation downwards as much as you can go. Perfect. And then upward now and external rotation. At this position, I would like to point out that when the patient is doing medial rotation, continue, please do. Go, 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 go. At this point, we are also looking at the scapular motion, making sure that it is actually a GH motion by itself, not an entire shoulder complex. This is a good point to make when you're assessing on what we are looking for when the patient is doing internal rotation. This is basically where the original pure GH stops, medial rotation, and then the scapula starts to kick in, and we're looking at more of an internal rotation of the shoulder altogether now as a complex versus just GH. So that will be a good identification of which muscles are getting activated at what point. Okay, so uh, can you please turn towards us again? Wonderful. And then now I would like to see an abduction. So arm goes all the way up that direction. Beautiful. And then down. Okay. And then now we're bringing the arm again to 90 degrees abduction. And we're going to watch a horizontal adduction at this point. So bring your arm all the way towards the center plane. Excellent. And that's it. And the reason we're not doing adduction and doing horizontal adduction because your body is on the way. Uh, in the way, so that's why we can't really do a pure adduction without compromising adding flexion or extension. As we can see now, can you please do just an adduction um, like this here? I'll point out. If you do just adduction, then it's not a pure adduction because we have flexion involved. So that's why we try to do a horizontal adduction to make sure that we have a full range of adduction muscles activating, like pectoralis major or something. And that will basically conclude the one portion of the active range of motion. And then we have to compare on the bilateral case. In this case, we have to compare on the left side as well. But we're going to skip that for the purpose of saving time for you and for us. So in this case, you just replicate the whatever you just saw on the other side. That's it. That will conclude the active range of motion. We're going to continue to passive range of motion now. All right, we're going to continue our uh, shoulder assessment with passive range of motion. So we would like to follow through the same range of motions that we did in the same order, so like we did on the active range of motion. In this case, passive range of motion is basically, as you know, that I have to do the motion myself, the client is passive. So you try to make sure the client is as relaxed as possible. And then let's follow through the motions very quickly. Flexion. Okay. And at the end, as you know, we need to do a passive overpressure to identify the integrity of the joint or the muscle structures. Uh, I will have an entire video dedicated to end feel. So at this point, we're just going to move on. And if you need more information about the end feel, we can definitely go and you can watch that one. So after we did the flexion, we're going to have to get the client into the center like corner to the bit this way because when you try to the extension obviously you won't be able to do because of the table however I would definitely recommend you to turn and then make sure the client actually touches all the way to your tie on the lateral side because if you turn the client towards the client and tell them to come in that actually will create an inappropriate second so I'm gonna ask my model to please come this way until you hit the lateral tie here perfect and in this position now it's very easy for me to do an extension and passive or pressure and that would again be tissue stretch and I'm going to ask the client to go back to the center again now following the same order we're going to get to the medial and lateral rotation on the medial rotation again passive or pressure basically I'm looking at the shoulder motion here try not to focus on where the hand goes because hand can also do flexion and then that can be misleading so in this position we're going slowly and then the second the shoulder starts moving Right, at this position, the test for the GH internal rotation is over. This is now complex is taking over, thoracic spine is getting involved. This is not what we want to see. 
So here, passive pressure, and we're gonna look. 60 to 100 degrees is basically within normal limit. So when we judge it, we can say that there is still within normal limit, but on the lower degree side of things. On external rotation, in our client, when we're doing a real examination, 80 to 90 degrees is regular with a normal limit. Now we have a little bit more than that. I would say our client is a little bit hypermobile on the external rotation. Speaking of external rotation hypermobility, we do not want to see, you do not want to do uh, passive pressure on hypermobile joint because you're basically risking of sprain or strain or some sort of dislocation or subluxation. So it's a contraindication. For the abduction now, we're gonna proceed and make sure you walk with the joint, try not to hurt your back, trying to assess the joint. And again, passive pressure, tissue stretch or bone and bone is very acceptable and feels. And at this position now, we're gonna follow through with a horizontal abduction. But again, look at the hand position. This is not really helpful for my own body I want to make sure that it is safe for me as well. And you definitely don't want to have your hand right here because that will continue and it will hit the breast tissue. It's a big no-no. So we'll have to turn our hand this way and proceed. And end feel for this one is, in most cases, will be tissue approximation, the arm touching the chest, or sometimes if the patient has a very tight posterior aspect of the shoulder, they might have a tissue stretch. So six motions for this as well. And that will conclude the passive range of motion of the GH. All right, we're gonna continue with the resistant range of motion for the GH joint or the shoulder complex. Now, in this case, we're gonna put the shoulder in the open pack position and we'll ask client to hold it in this position. Now, at the resistant range of motion, we have to actually push in certain directions and then make sure the, the client understands that I'm going to count from five to one and then I'll move on to the next one. Now I would like to tap twice before I start pushing so we have a common understanding on where the pressure is coming from. This is not supposed to be a surprise push so there should be an understanding on where I'm pushing. So in this case I'm going to still follow through the same order that we did with active and passive range of motion and starting with the flexion. So this is roughly the open pack position of the GH. I'm going to push from the front here, that's the flexion. So when I push, please hold, five, four, three, two, one, and follow through extension, I'm going to push from the bottom, five, four, three, two, one, excellent. Now in this case, I have to use a fulcrum basic machine concept like physics, and I'm going to push from here, not from the hand please, but from the forearm, and because when I push from here, now relax for a second, when I push from here, the client is going to go to external rotation. So if she resists, when she resists, she's going to use her internal rotator. So I'm testing the internal rotation. An easy way to remember that for any resistance range of motion, when I'm actually pushing, and if I stop pushing, always remember where would the client be going. Very common mistake that people make is pushing from this. If I push from inside, and that will be mostly adduction. It won't be an internal rotator. So that's one of the biggest differences of, I'm still pushing the inside, but forearm versus the arm will change the muscle structures entirely. So in this case, I'm going to tell my client to hold, don't let me move you. Five, four, three, two, one. So this is a stabilizer. There's no push from here. The entire push is coming from here. And a very quick switch. Now I'm going to push from here and hold, five, four, three, two, one. In this one, I tested external rotators or lateral rotators. Now we are going to still stay in the same place and push from top here, and that will test the A, B doctors, five, four, three, two, one. And now we are going to push from here and check the A, D doctors, five, four, three, two, one. One more time, I'm going to go through quickly. And hold, please. And hold, five, four, three, two, one. That's flexion, five, four, three, two, one. That's extension, internal rotation is here, five, four, three, two, one. And external rotation, five, four, three, two, one. 
A deduction from here, not the top, but the side, five, four, three, two, one, and inside, five, four, three, two, one. Now, another common thing that happens that the longer you take, the weaker the client might get or the position will change. If you notice towards the end, we really went up all the way, almost to 90 degrees. Open pack position is roughly around 30, right here, 40, 50 degrees right here. So I want you to definitely pay attention to that. This has to be all the time open pack position. For any resistance range of motion, open pack position is paramount. So make sure that you keep the open pack position at all times. And that will conclude the resistance range of motion of the GH.